G'day and welcome. In this video we're going to be taking a look at our rather unique CB350 Special. It's going to be a bike just made out of bits and pieces. Um, and we've made some pretty good headway and we've got some pretty good parts as well. So, without going on too much, I hope you enjoy. I thought I'd bring this to your attention. It's a 350 twin, um, twin leading shoe front brake. This is the sort of thing... I was actually disappointed with the Suzuki, it didn't have its original one there. The guy that sold it to me has just done the most impeccable job cleaning it. And, you know, bagging everything and tagging it. He's kept absolutely everything in there. We can work out our ratio for the speed over there. So just have a look at the way he's done it. It's beautiful the way he's, the way he's sort of taken so much care. Um, we can plate that. It's even got the little felt thing on it, the hard washer. There's the felt thing behind there. And the seals. And just the condition of it is immaculate. It's virtually not worn at all. Um, so this is the brake we're going to use on our 350 Special. Um, I might just pop that gear out. I want to have a look at the ratio on it. The seal's still in there. That might be a little bit tricky to get out. I'm not sure. But I'm not going to force it. But the other thing is it's still got its lacquer on there, where it's corroded, and we'll need to take that off um, in order to sort of polish it a bit better. But that is actually presentable the way it is. We can hydroblast it. I'm loathe to do that though. I mean, we could do it. It will come up a bit cleaner, particularly in these areas here. But I'm so happy with that. Now we'll use a standard 350 um, 18-inch rim. So the spoke kit will be available for it. I just want to give it a bit of a... I want to take that drive out and have a look because I want to work out the ratio. I'm just figuring this um, brake out. I'm not hydroblasting it. I've given it a, a very quick spruce up. Um, I do need to just give it a bit more um, because my little polishing thing on the Dremel's pretty much spent. This has done forks, it's done everything, it's lasted a long time, and it's got one of those quick release things on it. The normal felt ones on your Dremel attachments aren't much good, but there's little bits and pieces I do have to I do have to get to. A full size buff does have trouble, and of course I've got to get in here as well. But I found in polishing it it was I was contacting the anvil of the thing and it was scratching it. So anyway, it's time for more tea. I've got to thank Matt. And that's the guy off Gumtree I bought this from. Um, and his cleaning is just like that. And he's really lubricated the speedo drive. Um, I just thought I'd put some stuff in it. And the detail into his work. I mean, he's taken the clever pins out, cleaned them all. He's really done some incredible work. Um, where's my little scotch white pad? Hang on. And I mean, I wouldn't ordinarily spend time filming this sort of stuff, but... I'm just so impressed with what he did. Right, and we can see the little, and we can see it's got a master, a master spline and a dot. Anytime grease is used on anything like this, it's got to be high temperature bearing, just so it doesn't sort of liquefy all over your brakes. That would be kind of bad. Um, the item sits like that in the bike, so this would go in like so and we've got the felt now I do have to get one bit plated and that's the spring um, that just sort of sits like that and actuates off the arm and the arm should have a, you know, a mark on it somewhere I mean normally when you buy this sort of kit this is very expensive stuff because everyone with their cafes wants this sort of thing and um, I've got to say, I paid $110 for the whole thing. I've still got to clean under here, but that's the reason I wanted the front hub. It's just purely mechanical and looks lovely. Um, this isn't set up properly. It's supposed to be a clevis pin or at least a pressed pin there. You could probably reuse it by centering, center punching the middle, but that's your brakes. So we don't do that and it could come off if we do that. There's another one supposed to be here and that's been sort of ground off to get the pin out to clean it. Um, so that has to go that way, I think, yes, 
and the pin. So I'll just get normal clevis pins, I think, and I'll put the clevis pin in through that side and split pin and all that sort of stuff on the other. So that'll go like that and meet up with the brake cable. Um, I'll have to put one in there too. The spring I haven't put on because it's going to be plated. And again, we're going to heat treat this. So those two there go off to be plated. While I was scrounging around looking for fasteners, because the other ones here are being plated too, but I found some good um, other ones. <laughs> Whatever. They're the alternator cover bolts off the caster, the off the bike we're doing. That one's knackered. I've got some new ones of those somewhere. I've just, I can't remember where I'll put them. This is just a work of art, this thing. It was lovely. Uh, oddly enough, when you straighten them, the cable's right out. Yet, I've got those dots lined up there and there. So, they, unless they're wrong, I'd have thought when that was vertical. So, we can move them on the spline anyway. But for now, the speedo drive's moving. I've made a note of the ratio on here because I need to know what it is. Honda Speedos are normally 22.40 to 60. You can break that ratio down to 1 to 37 or 37 to 1 or something like that. But what that means is 22.40 RPM on the Speedo cable to 60 miles an hour. And I need to know that because I'm doing something weird with the Speedo. So that's all working. Speedo drive's working. The leaves are all on. So I'm going to chuck that in a box for now. I haven't done that side yet. That can wait. I'm not too fussed about it. But I want it to, I don't want it to get corroded and messed up. I've still got to, as I said, I think I said, I need another polishing thing for the Dremel to get into these areas here and just around in there. That bit there is covered by the cable, it won't matter. And we'll just give it a bit of a clean because it has got my oily finger marks all over it. But doesn't that look lovely? That is the reason that I wanted this over a disc. A disc is better all day, every day, but it doesn't look like that. Pop that in there. I've been looking for one of these for on and off a year. Since I got that motor, I kind of had a plan what I wanted to do. Please, with these, they're um, coils. I've got two sets. They come with a little wiring. They're the wrong colours. I think blue and yellow are the two colours that the Honda use. Hondas use. New um, spark, um, spark plug-ins for the centre cylinders and the outer cylinders. And of course, the coils themselves. Pre-production, but really happy with that. Nice flexible leads. We can cut them to length. We can do what we need to with that. Um, delighted. Absolutely delighted. They should be more reliable than the very, very old ones I have. The ones that were in the special on that go-kart engine, they're going straight in the bin. The ones that were on the bike I'll keep as spares um, because they're still actually serviceable. It was running on only a couple of cylinders, though, so... Yeah, we'll do the carburetors, we'll put these on. I'm expecting to see four cylinders running. But they can go away until we're ready to use them. In my little pile of stuff. Some of these screws are knackered. Um, where is it? This one here. You wouldn't even bother with that. I can go straight in the bin. And I'm finding new ones that I bought surplus to what I needed. And... Um, I'm having success. <laughs> so I've got four new bolts for the um, alternator. They can go, these ones are probably still all right. I'll throw them in the bucket, get them done. And you'd be amazed. I mean, they will come out looking like those things. So I've just, I've got a bucket of stuff over here on the plimmy, which is just plating. There's a steering bolt. I haven't got half the stuff I need yet. That'll have to get powder coated. That's the front mount, but I think it's wrong, or it looks different from what the other 350 has. There's one fastener that's in there, which I won't even bother with. And the rest of it's just... That's Dave's swing arm bolt for the XL, but it won't fit. It's too narrow for this bike, but I'll get it done anyway. And of course that, which is off the twin leading shoe where it's been ground, that'll just rust, if you can see it. I don't think you can focus on that, can we? That'll just rust, so we'll get that done too. I've got to have a clean-up. I'm almost ready to have a, another cleanup. What always bangs on about these? These are impact bits for Japanese industrial standard. Apparently, JIS stuff finished up, or they stopped producing it in 2008. I'm about to order some sort of hand screwdrivers in it though, because I keep sort of pulling these out. But they're so good. They're actually much better fastener than Phillips. The inside's sort of a sharp transition, not a um, 
Not like a Phillips, which is sort of rounded in the centre and tend to cam out. A package just rocked up in the post. Um, all up, this was $18. Uh, that's the price of a bottle of wine. $2.20 if you buy it from Aldi. Um, this is a headlight bucket for a CB500. Um, and it was on eBay, buy it now, five bucks. I saw the ad as soon as it rocked up and I clicked on it. Because some people think they're $100 worth. And they probably are, I don't know. But five bucks can't go wrong here. Let's have a look at it. This I bought for the reason of... Um... Oh, this is great. That is flawless. It's also big. Hang on. Damn, that's bigger than the bloody 350 one. I was going to use the 350 headlight in there. <laughs> but $5, guys. I mean, there's not even a crack anywhere on it. <laughs> it looks like it's a 7-inch light. Um, I thought it was smaller. I thought it would be the same as the 350. Yeah, it's going to take a 7-inch light in there. Um, it doesn't matter for five bucks, it's a great spare for something. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> um, it was still good value and it's a genuine hundred part. My mother-in-law was having a clean out and she was throwing out this rather sexy corjo and a mattress inflator, which these have a tendency to be a bit of a dead loss, but it does turn some air. So I'm sure it'll be fine for things like uh, blowing out dust from computer cases. Uh, as for this thing, I had a, go a kettle out here, but the one in the kitchen died, so I took it inside. So this is perfect for the garage. Let's turn the cordio on and see what happens. Not much. Right, so we're not here to discuss cordios, we're here to discuss motorbikes. Just a moment, please. But before we do, the cordio came with this rather sexy cordio carry bag and two cordio cups. And some cordio instructions, which start with... Poor Joe. Anyway, I want to talk about the headlight and the speed. And... All right, let's have a look at this. Right, here we have, I'm just going to take that off for a moment, CB750 Speedo, uh, police special one. It has a sort of a almost right angle drive, a 45 degree drive on it, which is offset. And had two captive nuts, which I have taken out because they're on the outside. I don't think that's making any noise yet. And that way we can fit it in the headlight shell. Now the headlight shell is CB450 Police. The cordio is making sounds. Can you hear it? I'll move it closer. Starting to boil. I hope I don't knock it over, that would really hurt. Oh, okay. Now, there's a couple of things with this which are good and bad. I really love the headlight switch on the headlight. One of those old Bakelite ones. I'm thinking about getting a 3D printer because you can't get the original Honda ones. They're kind of like a baseball cap shape, if you know what I mean, but tape it off at the end and you sort of swing them left and right. There's a warning light goes there, which doesn't worry me. I can put a high beam light there. That's cool. There's a couple of things with it, though. That light, um, obviously CB450s don't have the um, most of the wiring inside the headlight, so that's going to have to be bigger. And so I'm going to sort of drill a hole next to it and make that hole bigger. And that way, pardon me, I can pass all the wiring into the headlight, which is where it's meant to be. Just a moment. Let's have a look. Is it going to turn off? probably steaming up my camera right oh it went off what a good cordio that's good I'm really impressed with it grandma um Susie's mum gave it to me for nothing I like it that's awesome right let's just move the cordio for a moment so when we pop this in like that the manning holes wrong the diameter of this the idea that's wrong and the speedo drive is pointing into a blank piece of steel. So we're gonna to have to block this hole up, weld a patch in there, cut another hole for that. I'm almost tempted to just do one big hole over here a bit, maybe block these two up. 
and then pop the speedo cable out through the back. The other thing is the light doesn't fit. Now, I had some old steel. This is XW, or that's XY Fairmont Saddle. So I was doing this, this about six years ago I did that. For the, it was when I was restoring the XW. And so I've made a template, cut it out of steel. Didn't have enough, so it's cut it out of two pieces. I'm gonna weld this together. And what that will do when I finesse it, is that will sit over there. Yes. And provide the OD, or the ID, for the speedo. So if we, where's the top of the speedo? The speedo's here. I'm gonna weld this ring together. I can put a, say a five mil nut cert into the side. And once this is welded, that will fit. And it will go over. And that way that will give us the right manning for the speedometer. And I'll weld it around here, I'll bodywork it, and then I'll paint it to a suit headlight, which isn't going to be black, it's going to be body colour. So that's what we're up to. The only problem is I can't do it at the moment because my welding mask has died. I'm not going to bother cutting that ring out. I'm just going to leave it there. It's a reasonable support, and I think once that's in, it won't come to any harm. It'll be fine. I've just got to finesse the shape of it. Once I've welded it, you can see that's wrong there. But once I've welded it, that will all fit beautifully. Then we've got to think about the headlights. So once we've done that, and we cut our holes and welded up the other ones, I'll etch primer around it. Then I'm going to leave it in etch until I get the right headlight ring. Because it does look to be different from a CB350, even though the diamond of it's the same. Right, so I've <clears throat> done a really half assed job welding that. I didn't want too much on it because I want to bodywork it. The thing is, what I've got, if I've just marked the centre line, is I've got it higher at the front than the back. And it doesn't worry me because it just means the speed is going to be cantered back towards me a bit, whereas traditionally they're quite flat. If I put it, where's the bottom of it there? If I put it on the speedo itself, that would line up there. I haven't finished doing that yet, so pardon the dodginess. I mean, that's off a bit, but that, that doesn't matter for the purpose of illustration. It's sitting out a bit in some areas because there's spot welds, and this is undulated along here. If you can see the reflection, it goes up and down where it's been, where this bit in a bit here has been spot welded. So. As I said, body works the order of the day, but if I have it too close, it's got probably probably only about three millimeters of play. I want to give that switch enough room because I want to put the switch here or have it off facing back and then on facing here, if you know what I mean, because it's just going to be limited for room a bit. Right, so that is a bit better. Make sure the dog doesn't come in. If I line that up center. I'll have to just run around here and clean up that metal. I actually took a bunch more off here because I thought, because without the speedo in, it sits right back almost perfectly. But that means the speedo is going to fit. It sits out there and I don't want that. I want the speedo flush right in there like that. Um, of course, I also need to make sure it's dead center. Right, so we're finally back on our 350 special engine. This was the one that was in the go-kart. It was a mess. Can you see? I can't see what you're looking at because the camera's on the opposite side. Now we couldn't put the bottom case on. It was all, um, what do you call it? Hydroblasted. It was all hunky-dory and the gear sets were nice. The bearings were good. Uh, the pistons were shot. We did end up using the other pistons and also the primary chain. Even the um, we used them out of the other engine because they had minimal wear, a lot better than what these were. But the tension in this was good. Now, this finally arrived three months after I ordered it from the United States of America. This is the starter gear that runs down there somehow. Where does it go? It goes in something like that. I might have to take that tension, that guide out. To fit it in. Yes, I think I do. That's a pain. That has to go in. Anyway, um, I think what I'll do, that's a lovely looking piece. It was quite reasonable. And it's also got the 
in a bread packaging. The shaft, as well as a little keeper, and the bolt, which is wonderful. So that can go in the rubbish, and we can put this in. But I'm going to have to take that crank out before I put it in, because it goes in under there. I don't think, unless I just pull that gear, I wonder if I can just pull that gear set out and get it in. That might be easier. Can I slip him down here? Slip him down. No, you cannot, you bastard. Why not? I tried to get it, I just ended up taking everything out of the gearbox. And give another wipe. Why not? And now we're going to stick this guy in. I think, whoops, I think it goes in that way. I think, because it doesn't fit it the other way. And where's the shaft? Here's the shaft. And that's got a thing where the bolt, there's a special bolt actually goes into it like that to lock it in, that goes in through the top. So I think we put a bit of oily around it, and we can just sort of get it in from this side. I don't know why this was left out when the, in, when the engine was, um, it must have been rebuilt and someone's left it out. And I don't know why. I don't know why you would do that. There we go. And that should spin. That's a good thing. It goes in there. And then that bolt's going to lock it in. Well, it's really going to lock it in. I'm going to put a lock turn around it. That would fit around that ledge. And we'll put this in with a tiny bit of a locky tight. And that will hold it. And then I can just put the gearbox together. And I'm not going to show you everything because you've seen me doing CB350F engines. <clears throat> Same as CB3400, but 5-speed instead of 6. There we go. And that should work. Hopefully it's the right one. If it's the wrong one, I'll scream. Click. It's from the house of She'll Be Right. I don't want to bother bending that other bit. We've got a lock tab and we've got locked tight, so that won't go anywhere. That seems right. That seems pretty darn good. I'm going to put the ship walking and I shall be back in a moment. Blow flies in here. Must be me, I must smell like poo. Uh, right, so we've got all that in. I've just got to go through the gears again. No, I'm not going to do it here, I'll do it later. And there's your sprag. Oh, sorry, your idler. That will run. And before we can um, put the thing back together, that is going to run on there. Something like that. Yes, it does. That runs on that gear there, and then the starter runs on that. That's your sprag clutch, it's just a one-way clutch, and it feels fine. I don't know why they have elected not to put the idler back in, because it's just ludicrous. So that will sit like that, and then the jack shaft goes through there. Well, the bottom end's all together. I'm going to put a gasket here, that's an old gasket. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because this engine is going to be sitting in a frame on the bench and the sump pan is too deep. So I'm just going to pop a few screws or bolts, fasteners in here. To just to make sure no debris, nothing like that, no, I missed the hole. No debris, nothing like that gets into it while it's sitting in the frame on the bench, if that makes any sense at all. So that's the purpose behind this, so I can get this started. There we go. And it'll just keep any nasties from crawling in or you know anything like that. It's just a bit of ply with a gasket there, and I'm only going to hold it in with a few bolts. So we we'll just do them up finger tight, and that will keep it protected as much as it needs to be. So that's cool. So I'm just going to put the rest of the gear shift mechanism on. I'll bang the clutch on, and we should be good. Right. Okie dokie, so we're ready to put the cylinders on. I've given it a light hone. Uh, where? You can see a ridge um, at the top, but 
I don't know. I don't really care. I've got... It is slight. It's not too bad. But it's there. And I knew it was there. So, the engine's back together. I think that's going to need replacing that sprocket. You can see it's leaning a little bit in direction of rotation. So, these teeth are leaning back a little bit. So, I don't think that's going to do. All pumps all overhauled. All the bearings are original. The timing chain is original. I was wrong before because the change engine works really well. So, all I've really done to this is change the primary chain and put that gear in, in there for the starter. And cleaned it. You know, it's got greasy, oily fingerprints all over it, so I will have to give it a bit of a wipe down with some thinner. Um, once I've got those barrels on, and it's interesting, I, I washed them in hot water in the laundry, and they flash rusted in front of me. So I've got to put those O-rings in there, new gasket in the bottom. And I'll chuck it in the frame. It'll only be secured, sort of, down the bottom, here on either side, and also that three bolt. So it's just sort of sitting there, but it doesn't matter. It gets it into one spot and gives me more bench room. I'm going to take this off, that feels like the thread's binding, there might be some muck in there. It's probably more of that bloody glass shot. Ridiculous, I remembered on the other one. Um, but not on this, I forgot all about it. And I had to um, redo the engine ones. Which is stupid of me. It's going to run a six knot, yeah it is too, you can hear it, but a shot. You don't want that stuff around your engine. I mean, this is a blind hole, so I can't get in to anything. Ooh, no, no. But it's just not something you want in your engine because it will just chew out every bearing and seal surface you can think of. Where's my rag? Here's a rag. Listen to the thunder. The dog will be going nuts. We've got a dog that's petrified of it. Is there a thread in there? Yes, there is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It just stuffs everything up. That's the only downside about hydroblast, and you've really got to remember where it is. It's all over. I'll have to try and fish it out too. I'll put some grease on a stick. I use the magnet, and you can just stick it in. It all sticks to there. It sticks to the um, grease. This tap and die set, I just thanked my brother. I said, I don't know if you know this. He bought it um, when I was 15. This one. It looks like a toy. But I'll tell you what, that has been through hell. I broke the handle, so I had to buy another handle. But all the, the taps in here I was using when I was a kid, on other bikes I had. And even this one here, hang on, let me fish it out for you. That's an 8125. That's the one I was cleaning out all the things in there with. I slotted with a Dremel and you can screw it right down and then back it out. Um, it's very old. It's a very, very old set. But I've had it forever. Listen to that. That sounds like shit. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's just a slurry of glass shot. I think what we'll do is cover this right up so we're in there Oops. and we'll get an airline oh I'll just have it around quite enough of it block your ears engine sitting in there and put the frame back I just lifted it in the cylinder head I've got a stack of washers there you can see it's just holding this down um, the cylinder head has to go and have the fins repaired before I can put it on I can stick the starter motor and bits and pieces it's actually not that heavy you can lift the whole thing up it's fairly easily it's just pinned in the bottom and underneath somewhere under there um, so I haven't even got that bolt I've got a cut-up version of that mount, so I want a proper one, and I haven't got this one here. The problem with this, um, which I knew from the get-go, was it's going to be a very, very slow process as parts rock up. And, you know, I had a spare oil filter thing. I bought a gang of three of these for the 750. That's been hydroblasted. Um, 
I can't remember where I got that. I think it had that in it, but it didn't have the spring and it didn't have the washer. And that came from England. It took about six weeks to get here. And that was surplus to another one. They gave me two instead of one when I ordered one for the other bike. But that's all right, we can use that now. Um, so it's just a matter of, um, you know, just taking it together bit by bit. So the videos on this won't be very common. They'll be sort of few and far between, really. Until, unless I can get some sort of donor. But I don't really want a whole bike. I just want bits and pieces. Maybe someone's wrecking one. Even that's an 85mm 6mm bolt. I haven't got one. Um, I didn't have one. Um... There's a spacer that has to go in there. I haven't got that either. I can machine the spacer. They're dead easy. Um, but yeah, look, it's the original motor. I've overhauled it all. New gasket seals. Um, that's the original sprocket. Don't know if that's going to work. I sort of mentioned that before. I normally get these sorts of things dead straight. I didn't. I just sort of cobbled it together, really. It needs a, a copper washer there for the top. It needs... What else do I need? But it's pretty much as it was, just cleaned up with different pistons and primary chain. Even the timing chain was pretty good on this. It was in amazingly good condition. So I'll put that on. There's not much point in watching someone put an oil filter on. And start sticking side covers on, I guess. Yes, there's a gasket. And it goes like that. No, it doesn't. It goes like this. No, it doesn't. It goes like that. <laughs> what an idiot. Alright, now we'll go for take three. Oh, that's a bit better. So, what was I saying? Right, this engine is not going to be polished, it's just going to stay in its raw um, aluminium state so the thing with that it does it is susceptible to getting quite dirty if you're not careful is that we can um, just wipe it you can get a damp rag or one with a very small amount of oil and wipe it off and all those prints come off now it'll probably still want to oxidize a bit but you can um, you can just wipe them over a bit of thinner or whatever. The other thing I bought for this bike, or this engine, is a loom for the alternator. The other one's just knackered, so I've got that. It's got a new grommet there. The starter cable goes through this one. That's your neutral switch, and I can't find it. And the rest of them just plug up down here onto these wires. What have we got? A yellow female. And they're good. It's just easier. There's 20... Seven bucks or something, I can't remember what it was. But it wasn't terribly dear. That's the other one, that's the other phase. Oh, I've got to order the thing for the Suzuki too. So I've got yellow and green, shit, what the hell? That's white and green. The white one's there. The other one, the plug was all melted off, it was awful. So I'll get a whole new loom for this bike. I don't want a modern loom. I'm not going to put modern electronics and all this crap on it. I can't be bothered. That could be for this. So I'll just make up a little wire to go there. And then that will all be sort of hidden in behind the cover. And be divulged through the top. Somehow, I think we've got to take the starter motor. We'll put the starter motor in. But that'll just sit like that. and look really spiffy. Just found it. Where's that go? In there. Hang on, I can't see it with the camera. See, <laughs> I've got to put that in there. That just holds the switch in. The original bolt I had trouble getting out. Um, even with the JOS thing, it was just stuck. So I found this. This is a little Allen head one. Hex head one, so we can stick that in. It's nicely hidden away. And it will be fine. Right, so we've got that in. We've just got to change that terminal. Put a spade on there. That can go to the oil pressure switch. And we're good. And this cover's not very good, it's broken. But it'll cover all this crap up in the meantime. Look, I learned how to put it on properly. So that's just pretty ugly. Um. 
I wonder if I've got this in incorrectly. Yes, I have. That loom has to go in there like that because that's all sealed off from where the sprocket is. And that can sit in here for now and it'll cover all that up. There's no holes for the engine or getting into the engine except these great big four at the top. <laughs> Well, that's sort of going to do that one for now. It's not really my best work, I must say. Look, I don't think it matters that much. This was supposed to be made out of trashy bits and pieces, and it doesn't have to be perfect, you know. It's not a restoration. It's just a, a thing. Just a minute. So there are going to be battle scars all over the place. I'm not going to try and get away with that. I will get another cover for it. This was sent over. This engine didn't have one, and I bought that from a guy in Perth, and I didn't know. How, I wouldn't have said Yes, if I'd known about that, but it doesn't matter. He was really kind to me in most of the stuff he did. It was really good. Spaces I've talked about before, I can just make that sort of thing. But this bike is, um, you yeah, know, I've got new coils for it, all that sort of stuff. They go up there. So, but this bike, I've just got to wait and get bits as I can. But it'll be fine. It's going to be a nice little bike. I'll get another Oracle to nut for it. I sort of cleaned it up as best I could with a file, but it's knackered. Um, so I'll put a new, a brand new repro loom in it. Um, I'm just going to use standard switches and all that sort of stuff like I did on the others. I'm not interested in um, the electronics, the high-tech ones. It doesn't really matter to me much. But, you know, we've taken, what we've essentially done is take a trash-looking frame and a really trash-looking engine and we're going to make a nice bike out of it. It's just going to take a while, that's all. So I'm going to cover this up, just the rag, and it can sit there for all I care. It doesn't matter. That's the gear shift that was... Um, sort of bent you can see it still is I think I have to bring it up a bit like that but again that's all right we'll put a new beehive rubber on it and we're good to go so that's it's cool it's really really good it's better than I thought it would be um, certainly I think it's going to be a nice little bike when it's finished I've just got to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of it and you know take it from there basically but the finish on it is lovely. It's just it's grotty because I've been reassembling it with oily hands. But anyway, look, I'll show you what I'm doing with the headlight and the speedo. Back to the headlight. We're just um, sort of giving it some light body work. This was quite weird because um, because it's a stamped piece of sheet metal. It was actually quite thin in some areas. It's got two patches in there which aren't done terribly well, but it doesn't matter because it's nice and smooth on the outside. So I blocked up that one and that one, I've made this one here, which again isn't great because the drill was walking, the whole hole saw was walking because it's very, very thin. Uh, but we've welded that on, that will be okay. I'm just going to just try and get it semi-level. Um, the problem with it is it's full of, well there's a run in it. Where's the run? Oh, there it is. There's a run across there. There's dimples all over it, but it's been spot welded. They they didn't body work these. They just sort of stamped them out. That's rough. They stamped them out and um, just painted them. There was no body working done. They didn't have to be perfect. Hang on, I'm going to put the back with 240. So all I'm going to do with this is give it a quick etch, just so it doesn't rust. It'll need some high fill primer as well. It's really rough there, look at that. I want to get rid of that. It's getting there. These sorts of things, the moment you get them in one colour, you see all these problems. But the problem is, you know, when you go rubbing it back, you can see there's highs and lows all over the place. Um, but I think we'll just throw some um, etch at it, just get it into one colour, and then it can just sit because I might need to um, cut and weld bits and pieces, depending on what sort of headlight ring I can get. The headlight on the 500 thing I showed you before is the same as the 750. I didn't know that. I thought they'd be the same, the 500 ones would be the same as 350, but they're not, they're bigger. Um, and this is the same as 350, this is off of 450 of course, it was new old stock and now it's unsaleable because I've played around with it, but I'll throw a bit of etch on that and I think it should be alright. Right, I always use a gun, um, this etch primer is $28.50, it's just single pack, 
Um, you can get it in rattle cans as well, but rattle cans are about 18 bucks to get a lot more in a can like that. Um, and I don't care how rough this is because I reckon I'm going to be revisiting it anyway. I don't think it's going to be too. Um, oh, that's fine. I don't think it's going to be too um, easy to get a ring, a headlight ring for that. I think it's going to be really, really challenging. That's obviously far too thick. You can see I've mixed prime with that stick before. Should have used a new stick, but I didn't. I'm just going to pop a bit in there. Don't need much. Oh, I'm making this already. <laughs> and a bit of GP, which is just general purpose thinner. Use this with an amber or acrylic. And just mix him up. Try not to get on my clothes. And that's about right. Nothing like a good old guesstimate. So we load the gun. Get it all over the camera tripod. <laughs> and we just go and shoot it over there. Yeah, that's perfect. Very, very thin, very watery edge primer. It's full of phosphoric acid, which bites into metal, which is why it's better for this sort of bare metal application than anything else. Um, so I'm just going to go and blow over that and we'll be right. Here she is. Um, just a couple of little scratches, so we'll high fill it um, to get rid of those. It's not perfect, you can still see, well, if you can see where you are, the little dimples around where it was spot welded. Keeping these. Um, and the OE ring for the old, for the 450 speedo still in there, so I've just attached this one. Hopefully I don't scratch because I've only just done it. But that should fit beautifully, which it does into here and that's our headlight for our project bike and I, I reckon it looks all right I'm happy with that so <clears throat> the trajectory of the speedo cable will come through there as well as the wiring that hole looks terrible but I do have a large grommet I can put there then to sort of cut a circle out in the center for the wires and all that sort of stuff but that's what I wanted that's that that's fine by my standard um, I reckon once we give it a little bit of high fill, rub it back and put a colour on it, that'll look absolutely magnificent. So that's it for this video on this um, project bike for a while. I need parts and I'm not looking for them because I've got too much other stuff to do. Um, we're building an engine stand out of scraps. Here's a spoiler alert. That's the dash I've made for it. Um, Blackwood and Beach. <laughs> it's... Um, kind of crazy. It's got um, bendy ply around the outside to give it that oval look and we'll do a bit of that. Maybe put a strip on the edge of it or whatever. And it's got that hole there for the capillary tube. But we've got to do this. We've got to make that really, really shiny. And actually I want to start putting clear on it now. And get that in the car. And again, circles aren't great, but by the time you put a gauge in, it's all good. So on that note, I'll say thanks very much for watching. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you soon.
What do you reckon? Let's hear it. Jesus. <laughs>